Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Gatlin here from Carphonics. So I told you on the last video that I would do, be doing a video regarding uh, remote starters and kind of giving an overall explanation of how they work, what's involved in installing them, and uh, kind of give you guys a better idea of uh, how remote starters work and stuff. So anyways, uh, I am a Omega dealer, uh, Excalibur, Crime Guard. Uh, they've been around for 35 plus years. They're a subsidiary brand of AudioVox. Uh, they do a lot of the OEM integration stuff for Ford, Toyota, uh, numerous other brands, Mercedes-Benz, uh, things like that. So if, oftentimes if you see a remote starter on a factory key fob directly from the factory, uh, oftentimes it's an AudioVox product that's inside of the vehicle. So, uh, and this is uh, the brand of... Uh, remote starter that it, the AudioVox makes and it's Excalibur, it's an Omega product. Uh, this here again is a, what some people like to call is a uh, bypass interface. This is actually not bypassing anything. I like to call it an integration module. Um, these remote starters will use what's called a blade. Um, so it makes the installation a little cleaner, a little tidier. Oftentimes it's a larger module that's separated from the actual remote starter itself. So I'll kind of go into it, uh, kind of head deep here and explain, uh, first off, uh, the interface module. Uh, any vehicle with a, uh, an immobilizer, especially in Canada, oftentimes you may not find it in America, depending on where you're watching this video, is um, the immobilizer in the vehicle, basically how it works is there's a chip in the key, and that chip corresponds to a vehicle immobilizer, and that immobilizer reads, reads what's called tumbling codes off of that key. And um, what this interface does is it remembers several or more of those tumbling codes that are off of your key and then gives the vehicle one that it recognizes when it goes to remote start. Years ago when I first started doing remote starters, the remote starters were done with what's called a key in the box. And a key in a box would literally take a key and put it in a box. There would be a coil wrapped around the key and a relay which would send power through that coil up into the immobilizer. And then when the remote starter triggered, it would send that signal to the interface, or sorry, not to the interface, but to the immobilizer and then of course remote start. So what's involved here is I'll open up the package and uh, give you an idea. So you see the blade here, this blade actually just slides into the remote starter brain and I'll show you that in a minute. This here is the remote starter interface harness. Lots of wires here, not all of them are used depending on the year, make and model. But these will interface to the immobilizer oftentimes on the OBD2 connector or straight on the key barrel itself uh, and or depending on the vehicle, might be on the BCM, might be um, you know behind the glove box, some Toyotas are like that, uh, stuff like that. And uh, these wires are somewhat long, they're uh, I would guess about five, uh, I wouldn't say five feet, maybe three or four feet long. And and uh, oftentimes uh, you're going to be looking at about six of these wires on most vehicles to interface with the immobilizer on the vehicle. So getting into that, I've explained how an interface module works. Next I'll explain to you guys how the remote starter actually works itself as well. So here you have the antenna, it's an RF antenna that receives a signal from the remotes. This is the actual brain of the remote starter here. And this brain right here interfaces with this and this blade actually goes into the top of the remote starter right here and then slides in, clicks into place and then this harness here will plug into the side of the port which is right there. This antenna will slide into the uh, ports on the back side here. There is a what's called a 16 pin harness. Again, not all of these will be used depending on the vehicle. Uh, this harness here triggers things like doors opening and closing. Uh, there's a hood pin it's called, so if the hood is open, it won't allow it to remote start. Uh, there is a tack wire. The uh, purple wire gets attached to something that will detect tack. And a lot of new vehicles, the tack wire is actually done through data, which is what this immobilizer does, and as well as door locks. Door locks can also be done through data at times. Uh, what else is in the box here? We have uh, two key fobs, single button. This is a single button remote starter to simplify the idea of what a remote starter does and how it works. And then you have the uh, main power harness, which is right here. A couple of fuses on it. You got the uh, the red for your constant. 
Um, and also you have a pink for your ignition, orange for your accessory. There's another purple wire here that, that attaches to the uh, starter. And I'll kind of go through that as well. And then there's also a little uh, peripheral harness here for uh, accessories, things like door mo lock modules, so on and so forth. So this is all that's involved here in the remote starter. These are all the parts. There's also a manual inside of here, which we don't really need to get into because I'll be explaining a lot of this to you. So basically, this main harness here, there is a red wire, and I'll quickly just unravel this if I can, quickly. Sorry not to make too much of a bored video here. So we'll just quickly unravel this wiring harness here. So on this wiring harness, you have two constant powers. These are basically connected directly to the battery. Oftentimes on vehicles, you need the accessories and ignitions to turn on. So basically these wires trigger and mimic what a key would be doing, turning the car on. So it turns things like your fans on and your power heated mirrors and turns on your BCMs and your computers and that sort of thing. Uh, in the camera, it somewhat looks blue, but it's actually purple. Um, this wire here triggers the starter to start. and It's a momentary start wire and it just basically triggers the remote starter to start and then releases the 12 volt signal. And then you have your accessories like I was mentioning, fans and such like that. I explained this harness in brief, but it triggers things like your, um, your lights and your um, door locks and your tack signal, the hood pins on there. Uh, it senses the brake wire. Uh, basically when it goes to remote start as a safety feature, you press the brake and it deactivates the remote starter. But let's say someone doesn't put the key into the ignition after it's been remote started. This uh, brown and red wire here detects the brake signal and shuts the remote starter off. Um, there's a button up top on this remote starter and it's called a uh, pit, uh, pit stop mode. You double click this button on the antenna which is mounted up on the uh, windshield and it will allow you to say start the vehicle cold, drive it to a Tim Hortons there, I guess that's what we have here in Canada and you can double click that button, take your key out while it's still running, go make your make your run and um, come back and your vehicle should be warm. So all these wiring harnesses go to the brain and the brain will go underneath oftentimes of the dash which is why there's these little tabs here for zip ties to tie it up into place behind the dash nicely. These remotes here double click the remote starter button to remote start from up to about 1500 feet away. Nice OEM style factory key fobs very, very nice for, you know, Dodges, Fords. A lot of times they have unlock and lock and trunk release already on the actual key. So it's nice just to add a single button remote start that will physically just unlock the, sorry, uh, remote start the vehicle and that's uh, as about as simple as it gets. So a lot of these harnesses are wrapped in black uh, Teflon tape, not Teflon tape, but a uh, friction tape, which kind of looks like fabric to make it look uh, very factory. They'll be strung along and whichever wires are used. So this, uh, this is plugged in here. This uh, harness is plugged in here. This harness for the interface module is plugged in there. And then this is, of course, plugged in there and then ran up to your window. So I hope that gives you an overall idea of how remote starters work, what's involved with actually getting them installed into your car. I know this is somewhat of a lengthy video, but I wanted to go over you, go over what it means to have a remote starter, what's involved, and uh, ask the right questions when you're getting it done. So again, this is Gatlin from Carphonics, and thank you for watching. Next video will be a video in regards to the installation of a remote starter.